This is the DJI Mini 2. Let's see how well it can handle winter in Alaska. Can I do content here on YouTube for solo creators on the go? People like me who are on the go creating small commercial projects or stuff for here on YouTube. So I test and review equipment here in Alaska and I do tips and tutorials on how to use that equipment so that you can tell better stories and make smart buying decisions when you go to buy a piece of equipment. Today we've been testing the DJI Mini 2, a successor to the Mavic Mini, but with more powerful motors, with a better camera, and uh, overall better control system. How much and how well will it handle stuff like this? So far, I'd say this is probably the ideal drone to get if you do a lot of travel and if you want a very small but extremely portable drone that you can throw in your backpack and just get some great footage with almost anywhere. For as small as this drone is, it is incredibly powerful. Not only does it shoot 4K, pretty good 4K, although it is a little bit limited dynamic range, but we'll talk about the camera here in a minute. But the fact that it, DJI says it gets up to 31 minutes of flight time, in my testing, even in cold weather like this, because it's about 20 degrees, uh, I'm getting more like 24 to 25, maybe 26 minutes, depending on how it's going. But the fact that you can get 26 minutes with three batteries out of this gives you a little over an hour and 15 minutes of flight time for three small batteries. That's really, really good. And the fact that you can have three batteries with you plus a charging case and it doesn't take up hardly any space in your backpack is great. Now, one of the things I like about this drone is that the battery life is actually really good and you can recharge it using USB. I've got this big power bank here charging the three adapter battery banks. Uh, just charging these batteries as I go and as I need them. Batteries are really easy to swap out. Do that. Click this little tab right here. Old battery goes out. New battery clicks in and you're ready to go. In my review of the Mavic Air 2, I complained about the size of this remote controller, but I gotta say it has grown on me. And the fact that it charges your phone, especially when you're operating in environments like this where your phone battery is gonna die extremely fast because it's cold, really makes it nice. But the other great thing about this drone, even though it's tiny, it's really pretty easy to hand launch and hand catch. So I'm gonna demonstrate that now. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. So you tap, tap the up arrow push and hold the takeoff button. And then as soon as you release that, it's gonna start spinning the motors and take off. This is something else that I really appreciate about this drone. It is extremely quiet compared to most drones. It's, uh, you know, I mean, it makes noise. Obviously you can hear it here. But the fact that I'm talking, the drone is less than six feet away from me and you can hear my voice easily over the sound of the drone. So now I'm gonna bring the drone back and hand catch it. The way I like to do it is back the drone in. And remember, there's no obstacle avoidance on this drone, so it's 100% you. When it gets close, just push and hold it down with your hand flat underneath it. Landing. 
is just as easy as that. But now let's go a little further up this valley and check out the glacier that's just up that way. I also have to admit how nice it is to have a drone that's this size, folds up to this tiny little package, really, with just this gimbal cover and protector. You can do that and then just stick it in my pocket and keep going rather than having to take my backpack on and off every single time I wanna get the drone out or uh, you know put it away. One of the biggest limitations that you'll notice with this drone is it doesn't have a lot of dynamic range and that's because it's a small sensor, it's trying to process a lot of information, but it really has enough dynamic range to do a lot of things that you would wanna do for just stuff like this, where you're out wanting to capture family trips or your adventures out in the wilderness or something like that. I wouldn't have a problem with using this on some of my client shoots. However, with some of the clients that demand high quality or want to be able to color grade, then I am gonna use my Mavic 2 Pro because that has 10-bit color, it has a lot higher quality. Or if I'm shooting in really low light for something that I'm gonna use my Mavic 2 Pro for, because it has a bigger sensor, it does better at low light. But for this, I would have no problem using this for just little bits of drone shots here and there for a lot of the clients that I work with up here. And of course, another big benefit about this drone is that it's 249 grams, which means you don't have to register it with most governing bodies. Now, that doesn't mean you can fly your drone wherever you want and do whatever you want with it. You still have to abide by the rules and the laws of wherever you are flying. But the fact that you don't have to register it is a nice bonus. But even with that, at least here in the US, you still have to have a Part 107 license if you're going to use it commercially. Now it has a few quick shot modes, which is one of the great things. It has orbit, it has boomerang, droney. So the easy thing is you go here, you tap on this right above the record button, you can hit enter the quick shot modes and then pick Droney, Rocket, Circle, or Helix. I'm gonna do Circle, and then we'll show you the rest as well. And then it'll automatically detect you. You can decide which direction you wanna go. Hit the plus button, and then hit Start. And just like that, it will start going. Now, unlike other DJI drones, you can't select the speed that you want this to go, but you can select the distance that you want Droney, Boomerang, uh, Helix, some of those other ones to go. Uh, but you just can't you can't pick the distance on or the speed on any of these And it'll do one full complete circle. It'll complete the whole motion regardless of which one you're doing and Then stop and you're ready to go again now for droney is the same thing you tap up here above the start button hit droney Which is one of my favorites hit plus Three, hit start two. When you're in there, you can select how far you want the drone to go or you know how close, how far away you want it to go, but then it will start going. And hopefully, it is a little bit windy today. It's uh, actually, it's very windy depending on where we are. Um, so we'll see how this does, but it's almost done. As soon as it's done, 100%, it'll start recoming, uh, returning to home back to where it started the droning from. Let's talk about the strengths of this drone. One, it's tiny. The fact that you can put it in your bag with a couple of batteries and the remote and barely take up more space than a lens in your camera bag is fantastic. Two, of course, the fact that it's super lightweight and easy to carry with you just about anywhere. It takes up next to no space and doesn't really add a lot of weight to your bag. Fantastic for things like this when I'm out in places like this and every pound counts. The other thing is now it shoots 4K, which is great. And it was the only reason I didn't get the original Mini was because it didn't shoot 4K and I film everything in 4K because I'm in places like this and I wanna capture it in the highest quality possible. The other thing that's really great about it is it has a good flight time. It has a, the super robust OcuSync 2 control system so you can go for a long range. You don't have any of the issues that Wi-Fi always had with these little drones, which is the other reason I didn't get the Mini. And so now you have the super solid control link and the great remote control from the Mavic Air 2. I hope they add support for the smart controller. That would be really nice. Another strength that they've added, stronger motors. And so you have a much better wind resistance now, which to be honest, I've used this in pretty much all the conditions that I would use my Skydio in, that I would use the Mavic Air 2 in. Uh, maybe not quite as bad as if I used my Mavic Pro in, but, um, but definitely stronger, windier conditions than you could use this in before. And the fact that it's handling this about 17 degree weather with some wind, is really a testament to the fact that this drone is a really good little drone. Even in colder environments, I was really concerned with how well it would handle the cold, but it's doing great. Now, 
That being said, I do always keep my batteries warm before I put them in the drone. That really helps because if your batteries are warm, it helps them give the most amount of power available and helps them perform the best that they can perform. So then we need to talk about the downsides because there are a few, they're not many, but there are a few. One is the fact that it has a pretty limited dynamic range in a camera. Now it's a tiny camera, no big surprise. It doesn't do really well in low light, but it does have a hard time adjusting when you have very bright areas and very dark areas. This is a great example because you've got very, very bright with the sun hitting the snow and then very dark with the dark rocks and stuff like that. So it, it struggles on a, a dynamic range, but it's still very usable. Not quite as good as the Mavic Air 2, and definitely not as good as the Mavic Air 2's HDR mode. Another downside is it doesn't handle the wind as well as the Mavic Air 2, or and definitely not as well as the Mavic Pro 2. But DJI does say you can handle up to about 22 to 23, maybe 24 miles an hour. Obviously, conditions depend a lot on that. Another big downside is it has no obstacle avoidance, so it is 100% dependent on you to not fly it into anything. Um, so far, everything you've seen here, I've flown it myself while I've been walking around, and it does a great job, but you have to kind of think about where it's going to be, where it's going to go, and make sure you have a clear flight path, especially if you're flying close to things like trees or bushes or rocks or anything like that. The biggest downside for me, though, is, I don't think it's a deal breaker, but it is a very big downside, is it doesn't have any tracking. It doesn't have Active Track 3.0 or 2.0 or anything like that. While it does track you a little bit when it's doing circle, drony, uh, helix and some of those quick shots the smart shots it doesn't track you like it won't follow you while you're walking somewhere and so that is a little bit disappointing because i do use that feature quite a bit but being the amount of size that i save and the amount of weight that i save when i'm out doing things like this i'm okay with that uh having just the circle the droning some of those shots where it does kind of track you that's fine by me. Although I hope in the the Mini 3, maybe they'll add some sort of tracking to it. One more downside is that it really doesn't shoot any slow motion. It will shoot up to 60 frames a second in 1080, but 60 frames really isn't enough slow motion for me to really do anything with. And the 1080 is a little bit soft. If you want to get the most out of your Mavic Mini or your Mini 2 or any drone you've got, I put together a playlist right here that will take you through some of the ways that I use my drones and will show you ways you can improve your videography and your photography with your drone. So click or tap there. I'll see you in one of those videos. I just have four and a half miles to hike home before a snowstorm comes and catches me. I'll see you again soon in the next video.